Hi, mining community. Welcome back to another episode of the Dig Deep, the mining podcast. And today we're talking to Scott Levy, who's the CEO of Bedford Road Capital, who are a non-bank originator that exists to serve a diverse range of uh, companies who are unable to um, access the services of banks and want to raise finance in the debt capital market. Um, Scott has a background in financial services, um, which includes asset-backed securities, securitization, debt capital markets, structuring, Islamic finance, and asset man- management. Um, and he's here today to give us an update on the financial markets and how mining companies can access much needed capital for their projects and operations. So that's welcome, Scott, to the podcast. How are you doing, Scott? <laughs> good morning, Rob. Thank you very much for having me. Yeah, and uh, good, uh, good taking the time to uh, speak speak to yourself. And obviously, didn't really. I obviously you you live in the UK, um, and you're currently on the east coast of um, the US, and uh, it's dark there at the moment. So um, thank you for uh, obviously getting up early in the morning to uh, to record this. So. Um, as we always start these podcasts off, I just wonder if you can give us, uh, give the audience a um, overview of your your career and your background um, before we go into speaking about obviously the finance industry at the moment. Oh, thank you very much, Rob. And um, yeah, it is a bit early here, even for America. I don't even think the coffee shops are open yet. So it's, <laughs> but no, it's good. And um, I'm, I'm, I think it's a very we're in a very interesting times at the moment. My, from my background, and although I've seen quite a few of them over the years, I started out in the 90s, in the early 90s, working in, well, I suppose it would be called now fintech, but that term sadly didn't exist back then, otherwise I might have been a fintech billionaire or something, but no, that sadly didn't happen, and, um, well, actually, I'm not sure, sadly or not, but anyway, here we are. I've spent the last 30 years in financial services working primarily on structuring, and, and the reality is that part of the most important thing about structuring, whether we're talking about equity derivatives or funds or or debt or securitization, which are all the kind of areas that I've covered, the primary thing about those is creating access. So allowing investors to access alternative sources of return, alternative assets, interesting aspects to the portfolio, or more importantly, project owners to tap into the market through different vehicles to allow those investors access. And at the end of the day, that that is the challenge that investment banks and merchant banks carried out for hundreds and hundreds of years, was creating a way to aggregate capital, to create interesting investment opportunities. Unfortunately, what we've seen since probably the GFC is over the last 15 years, vanilla investment banking has gone increasingly vanilla, totally focused almost on things like mortgages and consumer loans. Merchant banking, at least in the UK, is effectively dead. Um, And when I set the business up in 2016, it was to really kind of try and fill some of these gaps around assets, which are traditional, well understood, and absolutely essential, which are just not particularly well served by the investment banking community, which was set up there to serve it. And even an example, I was talking the other day to somebody about Goldman Sachs. Goldman Sachs is becoming a fintech, not no longer the kind of financing entity that it was. And between that and the kind of social pressure to avoid investing in things that might even potentially have a feel of not being totally ESG focused or totally green is driving capital further and further away from those industries which actually need it. So Bedford Road Capital working across those sectors is is a is what we really do and mining is a, is a particular interest to us and has been from our inception because it's a perfect example of that where it's an asset class that takes a particular bit of domain expertise and creating opportunities for investors to to capitalize on the future trends that they see. We need that stuff coming out of the ground to make these goals achievable. And yet people focus on the goals, not not the fundamentals. And um, it's a a very interesting space for us to be right now. Yeah. Um, Just wanted to give us an overview of uh, Bedford Road Capital. Obviously, you mentioned that you started the business up to to, uh, 2016. So just wanted to just give us a quick snapshot of of the business 
Yeah, thanks. So we were as a structuring business, effectively as a, a transactional well, focal point for creating access. So essentially what we do, we connect the dots and we have done transactions. So our role in terms of originating, structuring and creating investment products or creating cap ways in which people to raise capital. We've done over 150 transactions. Most of those have been listed. They tend to be always have some kind of asset behind them, assets and cash flow backed strategies and have done all over the world. And particularly if we think about things like mining, we, we've stuck to those um, geographies which have don't have that kind of massive both exploration and geopolitical risk. And also projects which are looking at the kind of between 10 and 250 to 300 million in terms of raise. Because again, if you're one of the big boys, and again, this does this applies to every other industry, if you're looking for half a billion or a billion plus, reasonably well covered, it's those mid-tier transactions that need the support. And this is the kind of thing we do in terms of creating, we have a legal team which does the working with the project owners to create the legal structures. We handle the cash flows and management side. We do handle investor reporting and we create that access to attract capital through uh, our marketing and investor relations team. So it's a, it's a kind of end to end business focused around these kind of mid tier deals. Um, you're involved in the, the streaming and royalty financing. Just wonder if you can just give us a quick snapshot of what that means to our audience that may not necessarily know um, what the streaming and royalty um, mm. financing is is all about. Well, it's it's a really interesting part of the of the life cycle of a mine because it the objective of streaming and royalty financing is to try to fill a gap before you get to kind of BFS stage. So you know, that kind of middle ground of needing more equipment, whatever the mineral is coming up out of the ground, more equipment is needed, how to finance that. And rather than just looking at, it's quite difficult to borrow just straight debt for that type of equipment. And the logic is quite clear because obviously the lenders look at this and say, hang on a minute, I'm going to lend you on a fixed return. The what you're going to generate, okay, you're going to take market pricing risk, but I'm only going to fix return. Where's my upside? And streaming finance gives you, streaming royalty finance gives you, gives them, these particular investors, a very interesting relationship with the mine. One is obviously providing the capital and the equipment to expand production, but then a long term relationship where the offtake of whatever's coming out of the ground is then split, some goes to the mine owner, and then there's a portion of that long-term royalty or long-term offtake that stays with the financier. And it sometimes can last as long as, you know, seven, eight, nine years, kind of life of mine type royalties, they might be term capped, but the idea is it builds a more uh, production-based relationship. So at least the costs are covered. But there's an upside then for the streaming and royalty guys. And it's quite an attractive risk profile because if you are in a position where you've got resource coming out of the ground, you don't, you're not giving it away. What you're doing is sharing it with some with the financiers. And it 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 helps that gap until you get full production level when you can go for a BFS and re refinance and phase the whole thing out. Um, and it works, you know, in some respects, it works almost in a crazy way, just like music, music royalties do. You get a band going, you get them started, you put, put them, give them a big break, and then you hang in there and watch them continue to be successful. And in that respect, it's quite a clever kind of element of the financing package between debt and equity. It creates kind of a middle ground for those miners that are in that kind of production but not quite hitting the scale that they need. So with this type of financing, I think you've obviously mentioned a few advantages for companies. What advantages would you say it helps investors as well? Well, the most important thing about this is that it, it removes a lot of the exploration risk element from the financing, which obviously will keep your cost of financing down. 
I mean, this is one of the things that as a as a miner to try and get the most capital at the lowest possible cost there's two ways to do that one is to look at a global or a broad base of accessing the capital markets which is where we come in in terms of structuring and, and giving that kind of focal point but also then looking at the reality of well i have mineral coming out of the ground I'm, the business is profitable i am delivering return i just know i can scale so those two elements together as part of a pitch to a, a royalty or streaming investor is, is very important because I don't have, you've got your 43101 or JORP, you've got production moving, the, the, we're now out of the kind of exploration phase, which is the most CapEx intensive. And now this is more like, you know, kind of OPEX financing in a strange way, even though it is a capital equipment, you're transitioning the way they think into, and that will help your cost of funds, which is at the end of the day, what, what this is all about in terms of accessing. But the other side of it for investors is it then also also can help deal with the geopolitical risks. Once a mine is in production, then again, a lot of the early concerns potentially about, you know, permitting not being in place or, or as soon as stuff comes out of the ground, they're going to take the mine away. A lot of this becomes, well, hopefully diminishes some of that risk because the mine is doing what it's supposed to do, creating jobs, covering the local costs and, and the investment that's been made and actually now in production. Um, how do you see the, 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 the precious metal streaming and royalty financing sector sort of developing um, over the coming years and into the future? I think there is a challenge to get mines to the right place where they can tap into this sort of financing in that you know the, the the exploration still has to be done the risks still have to be taken to actually find the resources but i think given the cash flow it's a relatively new sector i mean there's one big company in this who kind of invented this business called franco nevada they they've their model is being replicated in the way you see things happening all over the capital markets. You get one fantastic example that makes a lot of money, which actually in some cases has a higher valuation than the miners themselves. So I see that, I mean, I haven't yet seen a royalty and streaming SPAC, but because SPACs, I think have gone a little bit off the boil, but given if you would take something like a copper, and, and given the demand that's needed for how much copper is going to require, I, you know, it's not that crazy to imagine somebody creating a copper SPAC, which would provide purely royalty and streaming finance because of the way in which it manages some of those from an investor perspective, sort of scary risk bits, which might put off non-traditional mining investors. And I think royalty financing is a way to attract new investors into the sector. I think it's something that I would expect to see grow the more the people realize just how important it is to get the material out of the ground, get resources out of the ground to meet some of these targets for energy consumption or new energy production in the future. Um, given the current uh, predictive volatility in the commodity markets or cycles, um, what role can this type of finance in play for companies and investors? Well, I mean, it's, it's from an investor perspective, it's a pretty good deal because they're usually the royalty and streaming contracts are based on a percentage of market price. So it, it isn't a fixed price relationship or, or can't be a fixed price relationship given the way the volatility is looking. So that from an investor perspective creates almost a guaranteed margin, so to speak. They always know they're going to be buying at a deep discount to market price. The problem, of course, for the company's perspective is their costs are going up. So that will create pressure on the companies. But at the end of the day, it's also in everyone's interest to maintain levels of production. Because the one thing that a royalty and streaming relationship can't kind of survive is, a, is something going into care and maintenance because it needs to be producing. So there's a, although there may be pressure on the company because of the costs rising, a good relationship with this kind of royalty and streaming financing should find a way to continue production because that's what's in everybody's interest as opposed to just, I'm sorry, I can't pay my loans. I'm just going to put the whole thing into default. That doesn't help anybody. 
Um, with the growing focus on ESG for investors, can precious metal streaming royalty financing offer more sustainable opportunity to enter the mining sector? I think that it's very important because I think what it will do is properly packaged, attract new investors. And that isn't a bad thing. I mean, it, it, the more investors that are in the market, again, the lower the cost because it becomes a more efficient market. So therefore you get more people participating, more people understand the market, which should bring the cost down. And that's gonna be really important to, because it will have a way to ensure and expand production. So, you know, the mines themselves will have to be sensitive to the ESG considerations of this broader pool of investors who quite often don't understand mining. So there's a two part challenge here. One, get the idea of royalty and streaming out into the marketplace so that more people can understand the risk mitigation of this type of financing. But then on the miner side, they're going to have to be more savvy in reporting their alignment with sustainable development goals, how they treat their people, what they do about the environment around them. And those two pieces together can create a more sustainable financing model. Because, and, and I mean sustainable in the fact that the growth can be sustained. Sorry, sustained. I'm not, I don't mean it in the kind of way that most people think about ethical green energy, you know, whatever else. Sustainability has a weird kind of gray definition. What I mean is bigger pool of investors means you can tap capital more reliably. So businesses will be sustainable. And it, it's, it's a two side, like a lot of what's going on in other industries. It works for both sides. One, investors understanding the business and two, the business being able to attract those socially conscious investors who are the new people investing. Within the sort of mining industry, which companies and regions or, or even commodities are you seeing the most uh, investment interest? Well, everything is around, at the moment, most of the demand is around electrification and the, the needs for batteries. I mean, it's an easy pitch. If it's important in the EV value chain, then it's attractive. So copper, lithium, HPA, some of the more, and then lots of other little metals around, but the three big ones, and it's kind of copper, lithium, and, and high purity alumina which are fundamental to the manufacturing processes. And then you've got the precious metals, of course, like gold and platinum and silver, where there's always been a demand for these. And those I don't think will ever change because they kind of just find their way into virtually everything because they have such broad uses. You know, palladium and uranium. You know, I hate, I, one of the things that's quite interesting is now that nuclear power is approved under the climate bonds as kind of green energy. Uranium is back on the agenda. I think it was off for 10 or 12 years while people worked out, is uranium good or not? It, it, it's now been effectively given the stamp of approval as a green energy, which means uranium is back in. So be fair, I haven't seen it yet because it's only recently been approved, but those kind of energy battery driven minerals are what everybody's talking about and of course copper is probably the biggest certainly um and as a conclusion um uh, what's the outlook for bedford road capital um over the next or over the course of this year going into 2023 we've got two i mean it's very positive i think driven by this increasing demand for capital because investment banks are departing the sector <clears throat> more and more it becomes a little bit the market becomes more fragmented which means the role for us in terms of linking investors whether they're private or public investors sovereign wealth funds for example or or the kind of family offices of major participants historically in mining projects trying to connect up and get the right kind of support to get transactions over the line, this is the role we play. So we've got at the moment, 
one HPA transaction. We've got a streaming gold transaction. We're looking at a copper transaction. We have a, a lithium deal that we're, we're talking to at, at the moment about. So for us, the, the, we see this as a growth area, not because, well, partly because the world demands it. And then we have this role to play in this space. Um, and it's both on the more traditional side of, let's say, exploration pre jork 43101 to, to IPO a business, but, all, but more importantly on the streaming side in recognizing just where that can fit into portfolios. So a little bit of education, we will continue to do talking to the market about why this kind of financing is attractive for their portfolios when they're looking for high yield, but also uh, just, just in terms of the breadth of sectors and we don't need to go very far beyond those main geographies to, to see a positive future. Scott, really appreciate your time. Uh, I know it's obviously getting up early in the morning there, but really appreciate your time in uh, giving us an overview of obviously the royalty and streaming um, sector um, and obviously give us a, giving us an overview of uh, Bedrock Road Capital. If our audience wants to reach out to you, if we've got any uh, junior miners or even mid-tier miners looking to raise some um, extra funds, how can uh, our audience go about contacting you and are you across any so social media platforms? Yeah, so we're, we're quite active on LinkedIn. The Our website, bedfordroadcapital.com. Uh, you can look me up on LinkedIn. The We have uh, Instagram, Twitter, but really LinkedIn is our main platform. Follow, follow the company. Um, follow myself of course and we will do what we can as we do to communicate the direction of travel and particularly in the in this interesting area as to where the achievements and opportunities are yeah uh, we can include those in the show notes of companies podcast anyway so um that would be easy access to our for our listeners to reach out to you um scott like i said really appreciate your time Thank you, audience, for listening. I um, hope you now understand the royalty and streaming uh, model. And um, if there's any, obviously, miners out there or mining companies looking to um, looking for those extra funds, then maybe uh, um, get in contact with Scott so we can uh, um, maybe assist, assist you. So um, appreciate you for listening. Please keep sharing this episode amongst um, others in the industry and obviously people outside of the industry that may, may be looking to invest. So um, really appreciate your continuous uh, support. So until next time, happy mining.